Hey crafty friends, it is Laura from Crafty Not Shifty and today I am testing five Pinterest pumpkin decorating posts and I'm super excited to be trying these. I've seen these on Pinterest for a while and really wanted to give them a go and I actually grabbed these polystyrene pumpkins. So there's no like carving, there's no pumpkin smell. These are really easy to work with. They will last as well. So once you've done these, you can keep them year after year. And you get these two little polystyrene halves and then this little sea top pumpkin sprout, topper, stalk, whatever it is that goes at the top. So for this first one, I am attempting to make a punk Pumpkin. So a little punky pumpkin with some metal studs and I decided rather than making it white and gold like the post I wanted to do black and silver. So I'm actually using a chalkboard paint and um, I covered the entire pumpkin and then I'm using just a silver paint here on this little topper. So I actually went ahead and did two coats of both of these paints. So I let the first one dry completely and then coated it again. And for this one, after I painted it, I was like, oh, how am I gonna let this dry? I actually used this little pair of tweezers here just to hold it in place. So then I glued the two halves of the pumpkin together just using PVA glue. You do have to be careful with polystyrene because some of the glues can eat away at the polystyrene, but PVA is fine. And then I have these little press studs which are so very cute. I love these. I definitely had like a high school emo phase. I don't even know if it was a phase. I still very much enjoy the music. And um, so I definitely had a black leather belt that had little studs in it like this. I actually had one in white as well. And um, so this is kind of giving me those like throwback emo vibes. Because this is a polystyrene pumpkin, it is so easy to just push these little pins into the grooves in the pumpkin. And the picture kind of skips every other groove, but I decided because I had a hundred of these, I counted out how many grooves there were and figured out how many of the little studs I could fit and I wanted to fill them in every single groove. So I created one line as my base and then I went around and did just the top row so I kind of know where to start on each line and then I just went in and filled them in trying my best to line them up in each spot and just press them into the polystyrene. You could definitely secure them with some hot glue if you want but I didn't think it was necessary for this. And then finally, I've got that little C top and I just press that into the polystyrene. Again, you could definitely use some glue if you wanted to, but I love the way this one turned out. I think this little punk kin is uh, possibly the cutest. So I think that pin definitely turned out great in real life. Now, melted crayons. I've been seeing this for years and I love the look of melted crayon art or melted crayon pumpkins. So I was desperate to try this one and I didn't really have high hopes for it. I felt like it was going to be one of those things that looks better on Pinterest than it does in real life. So you might be wondering why I'm using white paint on an already white pumpkin. I just wanted to smooth out some of the texture of the polystyrene, so I thought a nice thick layer of paint would do that for me. Again, I glued everything together and then I just grabbed a set of Crayola crayons. I did consider pressing them into my mini, heat, um, mini glue gun and kind of squirting out the melted wax that way. But I figured, um, one, I didn't want to ruin my glue gun just in case it would. And I actually looked up a video and it kind of runs out too much if you do it that way. Plus the Crayola brand doesn't fit in the glue gun without shaving down the crayon. So I figured I would stick to the Pinterest post and the example that I see where you actually stick the crayon to the top of the pumpkin and then melt it that way. So I trimmed them in half roughly and then I kind of worked in a rainbow order so kind of Richard of York gave that one in vain if you're English or Roy Jibiv if you're American that tends to be how people remember it and then I grabbed some Gorilla Glue and just used a small amount to hold these in place. 
I did find that where I'd used the super glue, it kind of ate away at the polystyrene a little bit. You can totally use all of these decorating tips on an actual pumpkin. Um, but I, as I say, I wanted these to, um, to last and it was easy enough for me to pick up these polystyrene pumpkins on Amazon. I'll try and include links below to everything that I'm using here. So I grabbed my heat tool and it was working really well. It was definitely melting the crayons. I figured it would be quicker and easier than something like a hairdryer because it gets a lot hotter. But what I didn't realize is that the heat would melt my polystyrene pumpkin as well, which is not ideal. So you're seeing that here, I'm just zooming in. You can see all that texture that's appearing and certainly where that red crayon is, you can see that the pumpkin's kind of been eaten away underneath the heat tool. And I figured I didn't wanna destroy the shape of my pumpkin. So I switched to just a regular hairdryer. I used it on the lowest air setting, but the highest heat setting, and that didn't eat away at the pumpkin at all. Now, I, loved testing this uh, this Pinterest post. It was incredible. There's something about watching the wax melt, which is so very satisfying. You can't really see too much at the angle that I'm at at the moment. So I'll flip a couple times to some handheld footage so you can get my point of view so you can see exactly what's going on. But it is so much fun. I did find that the crayons liked to kind of slide off the pumpkin, even though I had glued them in place with super glow. I did try at one point holding them with tweezers, but because they're so soft and they're melting, they'll just pop out of the tweezers. So that didn't really work. But look how satisfying this is. Look at all those drips coming off the green and the blue. So once I'd gone round and melted everything and the crayons had kind of all dropped off or all of the wax had melted to the bottom, I let it dry for a couple of minutes and then scraped off any of that hardened wax. And I actually just went back around. I put a little prop under my pumpkin this time so it wouldn't all congeal at the base quite as bad. And then I went around and picked off any of the larger chunks and just pressed those back into the top. You could have left it like this and it was really nice, but I wanted a little bit more full coverage of my crayon. So I just pressed that wax back into the top and then went back in with my hairdryer to melt it again to kind of get a second layer. I think, to be honest, I was just getting a bit carried away with this one. I was having so much fun with it. I actually messaged my cousin because I can totally see her doing this with her kids. I would recommend doing it outside. I am working on my craft desk and ah, look how satisfying that is. So I'm working on my craft desk and I've got newspaper underneath or sometimes I'm using my white clean messy mat because I'm kind of messy. Um, but working with this outside would definitely be the best thing. Because there's a little dip in the center at the top of the pumpkin, I did have to dab a baby wipe in there just to kind of mop up some of that wax. But look how cool that turned out. I kind of finished up with the hairdryer here and then let that dry completely so it wasn't hot anymore and um, that wax had all completely reset. And then I came back in with the little topper and just pressed that into the top. I have to say, I was so very impressed with this. I didn't have high hopes for how this would turn out. And again, I think it is absolutely gorgeous. I definitely want to try some more of those like crayon art posts as well. You know, the ones where it has like someone holding an umbrella and you mask it off and then you melt the crayons and then peel off the masking and it looks like this beautiful kind of waxy colored rain. Yeah, I definitely want to give those a try. So this one gets a 10 out of 10 from me. I think it looks great. So for the next one, I wanted to use a gold or a metallic spray paint. I have rose gold here and I'm just spritzing this onto the polystyrene. I was originally working in a very well ventilated room inside of a box, but I figured it wasn't quite ventilated enough. So I took this and I worked outside and I added a couple coats onto this. Now you can see the color difference on my glove compared to the pumpkin. It's definitely a lot shinier on my glove and the spray paint did eat away at the pumpkin, but it kind of gave it a really cool texture. So I'm not mad at it at all. I do know that you can uh, 
spray paint polystyrene if you're very careful. I've seen it done by other people. However, I found that it did eat away at the polystyrene. I think that's because I worked in two thick layers. I think if you're really kind of slow and careful with it, you can build it up. So I love the shine on the little topper there. And I really like the texture on this one. So I'm happy with the spray paint as well. So for pin number four, I wanted to test a glittered pumpkin, but I decided rather than using an orange glitter, an orange paint, I wanted to do this in blue. So I mixed up a sky blue by using a darker blue and some white, and then added two generous layers, and again, of course, just glued together my pumpkin pieces. So I've mixed a watery PVA mixture, just one part PVA to one part water, so it would kind of run down the side of the pumpkins a little more. I wanted to create some drips. So I'm just adding a generous amount of the PVA and allowing that to drip down each of those little grooves in the pumpkin shape. And then I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on some glitter. I did allow this to dry just a little bit because I wanted it to be slightly tacky. And then I grabbed some of my Arteza Fine Glitter. This stuff is super, super shiny. It's a lovely glitter. And I'm actually gonna use two different colors. So I'm using this kind of teal color here on each of the drips. And you can see it's kind of all over the pumpkin at the moment. It should only stick where there's glue. So once this is completely dry, I'll take a dry brush and rub away any of that excess. But look how pretty that is on the top of the pumpkin. I probably should have uh, actually brought that color down a little further, but you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I did the same thing with the topper here. I'm actually using a green glitter rather than a teal. They end up looking quite similar on film, but you'll see the difference in the picture at the end. So once this was completely dry, I have that dry brush and I'm just brushing away the excess. Again, I kind of wish I'd brought the glitter down a little further so it wasn't just kind of right on the top and then those drips. I wish I'd brought it down just a little bit more. And I think this would look really cool as like a full glitter pumpkin, maybe like an ombre, um, like color fade. I think that would look really great as well. But it looks fine just as it is. This is probably my least favorite. So I grabbed some hairspray just to attempt to seal in that glitter because I didn't want any of it to rub off. But because it is such a super fine glitter, it sticks quite well anyway to that glue. And I just set that aside and let the hairspray completely dry. And then this one is finished. Okay, this is the last one. I have seen this everywhere. You take a pumpkin and you cover it with an old jumper. It is so simple, but they turn out so cute. And I was thinking there is no way that this is as easy as it looks. So again, I'm just gluing together my pumpkin halves, just using some PVA glue. I didn't show that part for all of the other pumpkins, but this one is so quick that I figured I'd include it. And then I'm grabbing an old sweater, or an old jumper, and I'm just cutting off the sleeve. So you could get a bunch of these out of just one old jumper or old sweater. And um, I think ones with like a knitted pattern look really fun. So once my pumpkin's dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the jumper over the top of it. It is as easy as that. Now, depending on how thick your jumper is, it might be completely opaque. Mine was kind of transparent. You could see the white underneath. And I could have painted the pumpkin to help avoid this but instead I decided to do two layers. So I'm just using an elastic here just to kind of hold everything in place so I can snip off the excess. And you could definitely use an elastic on each end just to kind of seal this up, but I found that it was better to actually use the two methods that I'm gonna show here. So I'm just layering that material up and the elastic at this point just kind of pinged off and disappeared. <laughs> So I grabbed my hot glue gun and I found that the hot glue didn't eat away at, um, at the polystyrene. So if I was to do the crayon version again, I would maybe try hot glue to hold my crayons in place rather than the super glue that I used. And I'm just using some small dabs of the hot glue and then pressing the fabric into place just to kind of seal up the end there. 
I will try and include a link to everything that I'm using. I have a little silicone mat here to protect my work surface from any glue drips from the hot glue gun. But you'll see with this glue gun, it is called the Dripless glue gun. Not a single drip of glue came out of this glue gun the whole time I had it switched on, which is incredible. Um, so just a side note there, it is still switched on at the moment and nothing is coming out. Okay, we have the top of the pumpkin here. And rather than hot gluing this, because I knew I had to press the spout in place, I'm just taking my scissors and making a small opening at the top. And then I'm just using my finger to work the fabric into that opening. So I'm just pressing it in place. Again, I wanted to keep this area kind of free from hot glue because I knew I had to kind of poke the spout in there and I didn't want it to be a big lump of hot glue so it wouldn't kind of press in nicely. So I had a small dot of glue just to help to hold this little topper in place. I probably could have wrapped this in like a brown twine. That's what a lot of the Pinterest posts that I've seen look like, but I decided to leave it natural for this one. And how cute is that pumpkin? It is so easy. You could get several of these out of just one jumper, especially if you don't use two layers like I did. And it's so cute. You could make a whole little family of them. Some little pumpkins with the sleeves and then a bigger one with the main body. So that is my five Pinterest posts tested. I actually think all five of these worked really well, which was a surprise because we all know Pinterest versus real life is never usually quite the same. So I hope you've got some inspiration for your pumpkin decorating. I hope you enjoyed these tips. I'll have a link below to all of the original Pinterest posts and a whole bunch more that I didn't get around to testing. And if you try any of these, I would love to see how they turn out. You can tag me on Instagram at craftynotshifty. And if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you subscribed. I post new videos each week. And you can find me on all social media at craftynotshifty. That is all for me today. I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye for now.